I'm Diane Wirth. And I'm Pardi Sabetti. Together with our colleagues here at the Broad Institute and the Harvard School of Public Health, we're studying the genes of the parasite that causes malaria. Malaria is one of the world's deadliest diseases. Every year, some half billion people become severely ill with malaria, and more than one million die. Most of the deaths are among infants and young children. In fact, a child dies of malaria every 30 seconds. And while most of those deaths are in sub-Saharan Africa, the disease is also found in Asia, Latin America, the Middle East, and parts of Europe. People get malaria when they're bitten by a mosquito infected with a parasite called plasmodium. The parasite enters the bloodstream and destroys the victim's red blood cells. There are drugs that can kill the parasite, but the big problem is the parasite can develop resistance to those drugs. We use as our starting point malaria parasites collected from patients around the world. Many of those parasites are kept in freezers both here at the Broad and at Harvard. We start with over 100 different parasites, some resistant to drugs, some not. We grow the parasites in cultures of human red blood cells. We extract the DNA from the parasites and read the sequence of their genes using machines like the one in this display. You can listen to Chad Nussbaum describe how these machines can read over a billion lines of genetic code every week. We take the DNA sequences from each of the malaria strains and compare them to a reference sequence of the malaria genome. The reference sequence was produced a few years ago by an international consortium of scientists and told us that the malaria genome has 24 million letters in its genetic code, distributed across 14 chromosomes, and contains over 5,000 genes. We scan the 24 million letters to find out what's common among drug-resistant strains, but not among the drug-sensitive strains. If a genetic mutation arose in a parasite that made it drug-resistant, the mutation would confer a great selective advantage to the parasite. The mutation would quickly spread through the parasite population because those malaria strains that inherited the mutation would be able to grow. Many of the drug-resistant malaria strains would have the identical mutation. And since DNA tends to be inherited in big chunks, they would also likely have identical DNA sequences around the site of the mutation. In other words, the drug-resistant strains will show very little genetic diversity in the region near the mutation. By contrast, drug-sensitive strains show normal levels of genetic diversity. Such a pattern would be a smoking gun, but you'd found a gene for drug resistance. So now we have a potentially tremendously useful tool for detecting drug resistance as it's emerging. We're developing genetic tools that will allow researchers in malaria regions to monitor parasites in patients and immediately tell if resistance to a particular drug is beginning to spread through the population. Then, doctors could switch to a different drug before resistance to the original drug becomes widespread and begins to take its toll in human lives. Diane and I recently visited a site in Senegal that our group has been working with for a long time and who's collaborating with us on the malaria genome work. We had a great time there, and I came away extremely impressed by the quality of the research. It's groups like this that will actually be using the new genome surveillance tools that we're developing. By seeing how the parasite's genome is evolving over time, we should begin to get a sense of the mechanisms by which resistance develops. This insight may help us find better use of existing drugs and to design new drugs for the future, staying one step ahead of the parasite as it evolves. We know that malaria is a preventable disease. Through a combination of controlling the mosquitoes that spread the parasite, and by quickly treating patients before the parasite itself has time to become drug resistant, I believe we could save hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of lives, and give new hope to a whole generation of children.